Here we go. All right, I think we are live. We are. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. So glad you're here. So glad you hung with us with the technical difficulties. <laughs> It happens sometimes. It does. I wonder, I bet I could like right now while we're doing this, I could like, I could channel you right now and do this thing called multitasking that I'm normally oh. not any good at at all. But you see me like, you see me moving and doing this. I do. I'm actually doing something else. Okay, do you? I did it. <laughs> oh, you I did. did. I did. <laughs> So what you guys don't know is I had to, good morning, I had to change my name on here because I use Zoom about a hundred times a week for an, all kinds of different things, but one of them is um, to help out on ADHD Rewired, and I am an admin, ADD min. So anyway, I'm I in there. That. I'm I in there that. more than anything, so I made that my default name, but then I realized I hadn't changed it yet. So yeah, good morning. Hi, Brenda. Hey, Kat. How are you? Why are you way over there and not here? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little story about a gal named Kat. Oh. <laughs> that was so much not fun. Yet. You not yet. Not yet. Well, I think, I, well, I think we need to do that one live. And I'm, I sure. also need to get on. There are a few people on here who've heard that little ditty that I created. That was funny. Yeah. So yeah, I had a very challenging experience. And instead of sitting on the floor in the fetal position and crying, I sat down with pen and paper and created a really funny parody of the situation. So yeah, it was, it was kind of very fun. hilarious. Really cute. Yeah. So what are we talking about today, Brenda? <sighs> so today we are talking about the dark side of mindfulness. Oftentimes we kind of come on here and we talk about, um, you have to know yourself to grow yourself. And we give you all of this stuff. And then we throw all this information about you to help you grow yourself and become a better person. But we realize that it's kind of time to talk about um, some things that we went through during that process of revelation um, that we had um, as, as we grow and still continue to have sometimes. Um, so there is a dark side of mindfulness. So we kind of just want to talk about that a little bit and hopefully make you feel better. We've been doing a lot with self-awareness and all of that kind of stuff. So you guys are probably feeling some of this stuff. So I don't know. We just want to help to make you feel better and understand that this is not just you. There really is a dark side to it. Right. Yeah. So we've been, we've been doing the key challenge where we're sending out a question of the day every single morning. And some of those questions, you know, we've gotten some feedback that some of those are really deep and to the point that um, actually one of my very good friends is a therapist. So when I was telling him about it, he's like, Hey, maybe we could do this, you know? And then I told him a couple of the questions. He's like, yeah, no, it'll, it'll, <laughs> you're going to need a therapist on speed dial for some of these questions, but they're, they are meant to dig deep. And, you know, the disclaimer is if it does, um, if it does start to feel a little too much or it triggers in any way, and I think we've said this before, but reach out, definitely reach out to a therapist. I just yes. lost it on the screen. Remember how I told you my computer just does random things? Well, we're still here. I can hear you and still see you. Okay. You just like it, just like, doo -doo 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 -doo, and then it went into a little square. It's so fun. It, it keeps <laughs> me on my toes. I never know what my computer's going to do. It's doing it again. It's like, I don't know if you'll see it, but it's like flashing. It's, there's like a ghost that's like touching my mouse pad or something. The ghost in the machine. I think it is. That's what it is. Gremlins. Gremlins. Oh, I have not seen that movie. In so okay, I'm sorry. Okay. This could go away. So, yeah, that yeah, was one sure. of my favorite movies. So, um, <laughs> so that was part of why we were doing this because of the self awareness stuff and because of that. But then also we started talking about how you know we really did go through a bit of a. Some people call it what is the phrase like dark, dark, dark side of the soul. soul. Dark, dark side of the soul. soul. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And usually there's, that's like what they refer to. I think I'm not and somebody correct me in the comments if I'm wrong and I can't see the comments either. So I can see them. I got okay. them pulled up. So. Um, but the um, dark side of the soul is typically right before an awakening. So yeah. if you're going through a bit of a, you know, a funk or, you know, I, I, 
I don't necessarily want to use the word depression because I do think that, you know, but it, a funk, we'll say a funk, there's right. a very good chance it's because you're about to come through on the other side on a bit of a, an awakening. And I don't want to like, yeah, I don't want to go. And we've kind of toyed with um, doing a show or a series of shows about cliches and how there's truth in them. And that's why we use them. And that's why people say them because you hear people say all the time, like if you're going through something bad, then you must know that something's good going to happen on the other side or all endings start, um, all beginnings start with the ending of something else. So yeah. you're like, Oh my God. Okay. But that's very true. Like when we feel whatever it is that's dying inside and we're moving on or awakening, Right. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. We'll Shelly did. Shelly did one on cliches. I think it was like the top ten cliches she hates. Did you see that one? Did she? No. It's so cute. It's so. We're cute. always so, so in alignment with her in some yeah, kind so, of way. It's cool. So speaking of Shelly, I would like to call her and bring her on because she is another one who's experienced this, and I love um, all of our stories have kind of mimicked each other. Like you said, we've always been right. in alignment. So we. Um, um, I'm going to give her a call and bring her in as a guest to talk to her about some of her experiences as well. Okay, um, so while Kat's bringing Shelly on, I'll just kind of explain. Shelly Dryman, you guys have probably seen her in the comments, but she runs the Women Over 50, a life redesign page, which is definitely not your typical Women Over 50 page. I am on her, um, in her group, and I actually love that group. It's a energy full of oh awesome, God. it's so many awesome women. The energy is always really great. And I can never remember the three things that she doesn't talk about. I know menopause is one of them. And... Ma she doesn't do makeup tutorials, menopause, and I can't, I can't, like, she says something about, like, the memes with the saggy boobs and the woman with the cigarette, <laughs> the cigarette, um, so yeah, so we're but, gonna bring her on because she always has something really good to offer, um, as far as these kind of, these kinds of conversations. Yeah, and... There. I was explaining that so you could be calling while I was explaining. I know, and I was, I told you I'm so bad at multitasking, Brenda's so good at multitasking. Well, I, get, I, I get to say caller, you're on the air. Hello? Caller, you're on the air. Hey. So, oh, oh, I was like, I wanted to, I put it up here to show that it was you. And then I was like, oh, did I just, did I just show all of the land, Shelly's number, but I did not. <laughs> That's funny. If I start getting uh, creepers, I don't know who to call. That's right. Yeah, blame me. I did it. Sorry. My bad. What do you mean, Shelly? We are the creepers. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so good morning. We just kind of gave a gave a um, brief overview of what this whole like the dark side of self awareness can be. And I know you and I have talked a little bit about how um, it can be a challenge. And we haven't given away exactly what that the challenge becomes in it. Um, I think, there's I think we should each probably go through what our experiences were. And, you know, those make some really good conversations. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll go from there. Yeah. Okay. So I think that, I think you want to start. Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I set myself up for that. <laughs> right? I mean. That is hilarious. I've done enough telling my story this week. No more oh, cameras. Yeah. No more yeah. camera. No, I'm Brenda, Brenda let it all hang out earlier this week on a podcast. She oh, did. Oh. I heard yeah. it. This is so, yeah. I think for me, the dark side of my awakening was the realization that I'm going to tell you exactly what my first thought was. But like, it was like, my God, you really suck. Like you are under your, I felt like I wasn't a nice person. I felt like I wasn't a good person. And it made me question everything about myself because I had always prided, uh, prided myself on trying to be very good and very, but it's like, when I kind of dug into who I was, it was like, you're, you, you, you like to help people and you do help people, but you're not necessarily the greatest person in the world or as great as I, you know what I'm saying? As I thought that I was. So yeah. it started to make me question myself, um, question my beliefs, question what I had learned. There was just this huge question mark hanging over my head and I was no longer the person who I thought that I was. So I went into this phase of just being kind of lost <clears throat> and it made me flip and become the complete opposite instead of being so stringent and straightforward and this is what it is, this is what it is. I kind of became a doormat because I was like, oh my God, now I have to atone oh, wow. for all of these things and I have to be a really great person. So I went 
to the extreme in the other way. And so no that whole, like, I, I love the expression, don't, don't, um, don't mistake my kindness for weakness. You mm -hmm. sort of mistook kindness for weakness. Absolutely. Or not necessarily weakness. I'm not sure. Um, so much as I kind of just, I, I felt like I knew everything and everything had to be my way. And anybody who didn't believe my way, then they were the problem and they needed to go. So I was very, if you don't think this way, if you don't feel this way, see ya. Right. No, I mean, when you became quote unquote kind, not that you weren't oh. kind before, that you thought that that meant that you had to allow people oh. to do whatever, be like you had to be passive. Yeah. So kindness I meant being passive. Yes, I did not. I had no boundaries whatsoever. We've been talking about healthy boundaries. I had almost none. Wow. If so I cared about them and if they needed my help, I was going to do it, whether it hindered me or not, no matter what. If I had something to do, oh, I'll cancel it so that I can take you. If I like it was so extra, it was sickening. <laughs> <laughs> so how about you, Shelly, when you like your the dark side of that self-awareness? What what happened with that? Well, um, <laughs> it, it's quite, um, I was just sitting here thinking about that when I was listening to, to Brenda, but I think for me, what I, what I want to talk about, what I want to say first is what, for me, it was developing an awareness and then developing a self-awareness. So there's a difference between awareness mm -hmm. and self-awareness. Uh -huh. Awareness is like the, the, the knowing of things around you and your environment. Mm -hmm. Then the self-awareness, of course, is going inward and, and learning how uh, those things affect you. So uh, my awareness, true awareness, really began uh, in that December of 2011 when I was on the train tracks. And I'm not going to go into that story, but I'll go link to that that episode of my podcast for your listeners who are more interested in my story. Mm -hmm. But so as I sat there on the, the train, you know, on the train tracks, um, hungover, you know, full of drama from the night before, <clears throat> I something clicked in me, an awareness of what I was doing and how that was causing these issues in my life. So I, I, I all of a sudden had this awareness of what I was actually doing. Mm -hmm. And then when I started started thinking about why I was doing those things, that self-awareness came in. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you girls that I hated every freaking moment of it. Mm -hmm. And here's why is because my self-awareness was like, you have got to take responsibility for your life. It's nobody's fault, but your own, that you're in this situation. Was it your parents? It wasn't your job. It wasn't your crappy ex-husband. It wasn't anything else. It was you. And so that was really a part of the dark side of self-awareness for me. Mm -hmm. And then I went to therapy. I, I spent a lot of time crying and poo-pooing and, and just really trying to figure out why was this happening? Why was I doing this? You know, why, 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 why? And as I, I went to therapy, I then became aware of more things that happened to me as a child, which we're not going to go into. But you talked about some of these things in your last episode. Mm -hmm. Then it created some more self-awareness in me, if that makes any sense. So it was sort of this cycle for me mm -hmm. of awareness, self-awareness, awareness, self-awareness. And part, part of the, another part of the dark side then was understanding and knowing and being aware of what had happened to me as a child. And then that created a whole other issues of therapy and, and, and the funk, you know, you just talked about being depressed and the funk and, and yeah. all that. So I, I think for your listeners, you know, if you are truly going to be self-aware, there's going to be some, some heavy shit that comes up Yeah, and you have to, um, if you don't deal with that at the moment, then you're not really going to be self-aware. And I don't think a lot of things are going to, are going to change for you. Yeah. Right. It's that so that's whole, my soapbox on that. Yeah, no, I think it's fantastic. And it's that, that whole, you've got to know yourself to grow yourself. So you mm -hmm. have to, you have to be self-aware in order to do that. And, you know, sometimes we work with people who, um, when they do answer some of these questions that it's, it's done, um, very, um, 
I want to say surfacely, but there's there's another word for that. But you know what I mean? It's almost like they're, like they're superficial saying superficial reaction. Superficial, yes, that was the word I was looking for. And it's very um it it feels very much like I'm gonna say what I think Kat wants to hear, or I'm gonna say what I think Brenda wants to hear, or I'm gonna think or I'm gonna say what I think is socially acceptable for me to say or what I should say versus saying that ugly shit that you're talking about and getting really real. So the other part of that whole quote that we're doing, you've got to know yourself to grow yourself is you've got to get real with yourself to heal yourself. Right. right. And, and I know you and I have talked about this because some of, some of your questions, I was like, Oh, that's super easy for me. And I was just like yep. blogging about them. And then all of a sudden I'm coming to the screen to call. I mean, like, I don't like this question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stop. If, 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 yeah. <laughs> if, if, like, you know, actually yeah. go into some more self awareness, which is a good thing. But I will say, I think it's a good, good start. I mean, at least, you know, you're looking at the question, and I really truly really believe even people that are writing on the surface stuff know or feel or, or something deep down inside that maybe I need to explore this a little more. For them, it's a safe place just to start yes. with. And, official, official and we have to remember that in the key challenge, remember that that K-E-Y, like, you know what I mean? That K-E-Y means things. So what I had to start doing, because I was doing the same thing as Shelly, I would get a question. I'm like, oh, this is easy. And then when I was like, okay, let's think about the key. And it's like, okay, know your truth. So what is my truth about this situation? And started going like, you know what I mean? Through each right. letter, I was like, oh, wait a minute. And I yeah. started kind of pulling up things that I didn't realize was there. I see your question, Lariah. She asked, how were you able to catch a balance? And we're going to get into that in a little bit. <clears throat> we'll kind yeah. of talk about that. But Kat, what was your dark night of the soul experience? Like. So it's interesting that Shelly, it, it kind of helped me a little bit to see something that maybe I wasn't even aware of to begin with. I mean, you guys all know my story pretty well, that um, mine was in 2010, that I was driving around. Um, I would gotten in a fight with my ex-husband, my husband at the time. And sorry, um, Brie is crying. I don't know if you guys can hear her, but I hear her. It's yeah, okay, she's Brie. crying. I'm not sure what's going on right now, but anyway. Um, so I, I was, you know, driving around these snowy windy roads and like I'd been having suicidal ideations for quite a while but then I was like okay this is this is the time I'm gonna do it and I had that aha moment so kind of that awareness but it wasn't until three years later when I was mowing my dirt and I that's love my that story, story. <laughs> so that's my story of um you know when I was mowing my dirt and I won't go into all that either because again I think we've you know we've all told very various versions of our stories in different places but um, for that, it was, you know, I'm, I'm mowing the yard and I'm thinking, I can't keep thinking this way. I can't keep, you know, doing this. And then I started to shift my thoughts. And as I shift my thoughts, I started feeling better. And for in that moment, I used gratitude, but where the dark part came was that, oh, wait a minute, if I'm, if I can change this, that means that I've created it. Mm -hmm. And then it was this whole cycle of how did I create this? And, and then I got into the whole like understanding that your thoughts manifest your results. And then I'm like, why did I manifest this? Why did I, and, and to the point that even like I'd gotten in a car accident and I was like, why did I manifest this? What happened? You know? And I think you can go a little too far in that kind of stuff and get, through, yeah. you know, I think you've got to be careful with that, but I think that's the dark side. So what I wanted to touch on a little bit too is, you know, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago in our, in our show with where we kind of came out to the world about everything and for me what i didn't come out to the world that sounds really <laughs> oh yeah sorry friend and i get that question a lot nope <laughs> um so anyway um That's no we, we shared our story with the world um and um for me being diagnosed with adhd at a at an as an older adult i went down this major rabbit hole of like you know, first of all, like researching everything and what could have been. So they're really, and you know, because I work with the ADHD community and certain things, I, I know that there is often a period of grief when we're first diagnosed later on in, in life right. you know, or as, as adults. Um, there's a grief and a mourning period for what could have been and, you know, all of those things. And I don't think it's all that much different. There is, there is a bit of a grief with this dark side that happens. 
That is so Thanks. true. I think I, ta- I talked about it a little bit in my book. I think well, what I said was, it's very difficult to look at yourself in the mirror and to see something distasteful looking back at you. So to stand up and like look in the mirror and go, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. It's almost like picking yourself apart and it's equivalent to someone else doing it. Just like we can get a little defensive when other people are pointing out um, things that may be wrong with us or things that they view as wrong with us when we're doing it ourselves and we know that there's truth in it. I think that makes it that much more difficult. And like you said, it definitely created uh, something of a depression in me. That's what made me go, so so I'm the problem. It's not everybody else. It's me. Right. And like you said, that, that's kind of what drove uh, my depression as well. Can, can, I, can I interject something sure, here? Yeah. Because you, 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 you talked about something, Kath, that made me remember this, but I think you and I had a conversation probably a couple months ago about how uh, I was feeling regret for things that I done in the past that I really can't change. And I think a lot of that has to do with uh, becoming more self-aware and regrets about, you know, if, if I could have been that person then I am today, things would have been so much different. Of course, I can't mm-hmm. do that. Right. So I did go through, and I still am kind of, kind of tapering off of that, but I did also go through this whole thing of, uh, feeling guilty and shame and, and some things because of the person I was then. So, but you know, it's it, and I think that brings up another point too is that it's just it's just it's going to be this process. It's lifelong process. It's not like oh, I'm self. You know, you wake up one morning and you're like, oh, I'm self aware. Right. I'm good. Good to go. Like, self awareness creates more self awareness. Creates more self awareness, which I think <laughs> is a good thing. Yeah. It is. And it's funny when I was going through this, the period, that three year period, and I think this was after this was after I I really understood about my thoughts. I was actually working on my deck and it was like an all day process. And after I finished it, I was like, oh, my gosh, this feels so good. And then I looked and I'm like, now my house needs painted. Like when the, when the deck looked like crap, I didn't realize that the house and I'm like, wait a minute, this is just like self-awareness. Once yeah, exactly. I fix this little part and make it all shiny and new, it it does help highlight another area that may need to be improved. And, you know, I've been working with someone about, um, you know, what they're going through with their growing pains. And, and um, you know, we talk about it. this is messy. You know, you have to be able to do the work. And I think there are two things, well, two times that this came up while, while we were talking, um, the word judgment and curiosity keep coming up. So, you know, when you said you look in the mirror and you're like, you know, how could you, or I don't like, you know, that kind of stuff, that was very much judgment and that will cause some depression yes. and some, um, some defensiveness. Yes. But if we can do it with curiosity, so, you know, if you don't remember anything else that we say, remember curiosity and not judgment, because that will help keep you out of, out of your overthinking mind, or at least take your overthinking to a different level. And it's the same with the people that aren't ready to answer that aren't, you know, answering the, um, like on a, like a superficial answer, there's no judgment in that. Um, and I will say, you know, to borrow, well, I, I'm just, I'll say it there for me, I'm very, um, aware of how I do hold space for other people when yeah. they're in that place. So, and what that means is I will sit here with you in it and not judge where you are. There's no like, well, you should be further along or you should dig deeper for that answer. If you're not ready, now, if you come to me and say, I want to help me do yes. it, then I'm going to. But right. if, if, if someone is not ready, and I think we all feel that way, like it's okay where you are. And then, then we go into healthy boundaries. Do I wanna, how much time do I wanna spend with someone <laughs> who is not, you know, doesn't want to. Cause you know, once you're in that growth mode, you want to surround yourself with other people in that growth mode. Because if you if you think about it, I completely lost my train of thought. And yeah, because I, I talked for a long time. As soon as I stopped, my ears were ringing. I was like, Jesus, <laughs> <that?"> <laughs> my goodness. I lost it. I completely lost it. Uh, oh, okay. And I think that a, another thing that we do is we often see like self-awareness as like a destination. Like I have arrived. I am now self-aware and I am self-aware man and I'm fine and I'm good. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's very much a journey. Like you said, it's kind of like, I always think about like walking through a tunnel and you can see the light, but the closer you get to the tunnel, the farther the light goes away. <laughs> so like you're always 
seeking that light, but it's such a beautiful journey because you're learning stuff and uncovering stuff um, along the way. And like uh, Lariah asking me, like, how did you finally find, find your balance between being super passive and that, well, between being not passive at all and then going to the other extreme, I just got tired. And each one of, that's always my, that's my rock bottom. I, I start to go, you know what? I'm feeling really tired and like emotionally tired in my spirit and my soul. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know exactly why I'm feeling this way. And I realized like you are doing everything for everybody else and you have not done anything for yourself. I actually sat down and started to write down like, what was the last thing I actually did for myself? And I, I remember at one point it was like months and months back that I had to go back to find something that I had done for myself. And since I had trained my brain to put other people first, I literally had to move five states away in order to get yeah. my peace of mind so I would never advise anybody to wait that long or to have to go to that extreme I mean if you do you do and that's fine because right. I don't regret moving to, to North Carolina I love the time that I spent there and I grew in a way that I couldn't explain but I had created a mindset in myself to where I had to get away from the people that I loved in order to not succumb to that constant and I don't think that they were um, in any way trying to be that way. Yeah. I had trained them to treat me like this. I had trained them that I was going to be there all the time. And I love you right. and you love me. And if this is how you show your love, then thank you. I appreciate right, it. Right, right. Uh, um, so, so is it Selena? She just wrote the song. I had to, I had to leave you to love me. Yes. Ooh. And it was, and I do remember, um, or I don't know if she wrote it. It seems like she would write it. I, it I sounds like feel, she would write. Yeah, it sounds like it would. <laughs> but anyway, um, I remember you and I were coaching together at that time. And I yeah. did not want you to leave because I knew you were running from yourself. And I'm like, you're just going to take those. I, and I knew that. But I, but that's the thing that's cool about coaching is that I also knew I experienced such a huge lesson out of that was that you know, you always hear the term, you can't block a blessing or that you shouldn't block a blessing, but that I learned, I can't block a lesson. Right. Ooh. And it was so powerful for me to go. I didn't want my friend to have to experience that. But at the same time, there are some times that we have to step back and, and trust that it is happening for the person's greater good. I mean, that does not, you know, obviously if somebody's being abused or hurting themselves or that right. kind of thing, but um, yeah, I think that's a, um, that was a big lesson for me. Were there any other questions or comments in there that we need to look at? Oh, Amanda said, good morning. Good morning, Amanda. Does anybody else have any questions or any thoughts um, at all? We do have some people on. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to jump in. We've kind of over-talked uh, Shelly and she can't see us and we haven't been quiet long enough for her to say anything. So. <laughs> Well, I, I can see you, but I've got the volume turned oh. down, so it looks kind oh, of okay. to watch you guys talk and oh. not listen to your voices. But uh, so I, I do also want to, if I could interject yeah. another thing here too, uh, uh, Brenda. I didn't know you, Brenda, that you moved away, or maybe I did, and I just forgot about it. But <laughs> I, I did the same thing when I got to Colorado. I had to distance myself from all the noise that was here. But another, another dark side of self-awareness that I encountered was um, when I got back, the relationships I had to let go of, how you know, angry they were with me, mm -hmm. because I had changed so much, and they hadn't. And while they mm -hmm. had served a purpose, albeit not necessarily a good one, in my life before I left, you know, it was just really sort of, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know that that would be happening. I didn't know a lot of things would be happening, so I had to deal with some stuff after I came back. But that was one of them, and that was really sad because I really loved some of these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had to let them go. So. Yeah, I think that's another, yeah, that's a really important one. For, for me, life just took some of those people away from me. Um, I, there was a period of time, it was really interesting because my son had these like four or five friends that he'd had since kindergarten, he was going into third grade and they all moved away. Like his core group of friends all moved away. Right. And then all of a sudden my core group of friends moved away. And I was like, oh my gosh, we're in this, like, it was just a really weird time at that, that point too. I don't know. I, I don't know about you guys, but when I was going through all of that, it's, it's almost, um, what's it dreamlike? Um, what's the word that means dreamlike? I'm there. Dreamlike. <laughs> yeah anyway 
surreal. Oh, surreal. 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 It was almost oh, surreal. surreal. Yeah. Like, cause every, like everything felt like a lesson. And I, again, I think I got a little bit probably hard to be around. Cause I'm like, as the school's been tearing, tearing, you know, like I just, everything was some type of a metaphor lesson. And I, you know, it, it's okay. But at some point you're like, yeah, I just kind of want to talk about the weather and not have it mean. I was just talking thing. about it was raining outside. And you're like, you know, when it rains, you feel that deep inside your heart and it's raining because you feel yeah. this way now. It's raining. <laughs> no, it's just raining. Let's not go. Let's, let's not mean. Let's not make it mean that God wants the earth to wash away. And, but you know, um, but again, I needed that at that time. I needed to make everything mean something. And you know, I'm sure some of them, some of the time, I was like, a around, but, um, but that's what happened for me. Is that it was like life took everyone away, and then I just I had. So did you guys both have a lot of alone time during this self-discovery time? During the time I moved to North Carolina, I, I did not meet one single person. I met, well, I met my downstairs neighbor and got, and became friends with her. I very rarely went out. I, I didn't, it was me and my kids the whole time. They started having friends. So they spent a lot of time out of the house and it was just this, just, it was just time for me. And I, I didn't know what it was for, but I knew that it was necessary. And like you said, we were coaching like during that time and kind of figuring some things out. Even when I was down there, mm -hmm. we spent a lot of time kind of going through that kind of thing, but I spent a lot, I needed that. And it was, how was it two years? I don't know. I needed that time alone, that entire time. I didn't date. I didn't do anything. It was just me. So yeah, yeah I had to. How about you, Shelly? Yeah, I, I did. I, I actually lived in the basement of a friend and they had a, a, a two-year-old daughter. Uh, but I, 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 you know, they weren't like in my face all the time. They mm -hmm. understood. They actually have said, you need to come out. They're like, you're coming out. You want to do this mm -hmm. like, okay. But um, so I, was, I did spend a lot of time alone. And I was lucky in that. I ended up uh, just getting a job as a, a barista in a small coffee shop. And I spent a lot of time alone. I did some 14 years. I did a lot of time alone on the trails in Colorado, which led to a, a lot of uh, aha moments and crying and epiphanies and things like that. But yeah, I did. I did spend a lot of time, time alone. And I think that's a really important point that you did bring up. Uh, I did have a couple of female friends I made out there, but um, most of my time, yeah, I was either in my head or on top of a mountain. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely spent so much time alone and it got to the point. I mean, I didn't want my television on. I did. I wanted that quiet night and, and I, and I've kind of kept that. I don't have a lot of music playing all the time or things like that. And um, not, not always, but you know, I, I, then it was almost nothing. And it was a lot of quiet, a lot of thinking. And I was never that kind of person before. I'm the, I was the kind of person who turned the TV on the second I walked in. I liked to have it on while I was sleeping you know, background noise and now crazy but, silence. But again, even to, sp to speak to the dark side of that, I think people have to understand that there is a difference between isolation um, isolation mm -hmm. and, ret and introspection. You know yeah, what I mean? Like very good. isolating yeah. yourself and being off like, I can't deal with the world, I can't, and not using that time to work on yourself, but just to hide and to be away is not a good thing, but to take that time to yourself to where you're actually focusing and figuring things out. Not that you're thinking every second of every day, sometimes right. you want to shut it down, but using that time that you're alone for introspection and to realize exactly what it is that you need to do, what it is that you need to do to grow um, and utilizing that time in the proper, um, not proper, because I can't decide what's proper, not proper for anybody, but using that time in the most productive way. Mm -hmm. And what's healthy. I mean, really, it's because, and again, you know, there are going to be people who um, that are, will do like kind of numbing um, activities. I'm struggling with words today. Um, like numbing activities, <laughs> um, you know, like the watching TV. And really, to me, numbing is avoiding. So, yeah. And I did that for a long time where it was better for me. Oh my goodness. I remember like I used, I was going out constantly doing something with somebody all the time. Um, and really it was to avoid being alone with myself. And I'm not saying uh, that people go out with people all the time or avoiding anything either. So don't. Right. <laughs> Finding the balance, knowing that yeah. there's a balance to all yeah. of it. 
Lisa said, I can relate to Shelly when I made necessary, um, when I made a necessary decision to move from PA to Florida years ago and left the area people couldn't understand. Seasons and people changed when I returned. A long time forced me to grow in areas that I need. It was hard, but also growth. That's that's how mm -hmm. I feel. I'm like, it was so tough to just be, to not have anybody. It was, it was to not feel like I had anybody and then to realize that I was my somebody. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, I do have somebody, I have me. So, yeah. I mean, that felt really good once I reached that realization. And I don't know, you know, I don't know about you guys, but for me, coming through on the other side then opened up meeting so many people who have experienced the same thing. I mean, it's true. It's so true that your vibe attracts your tribe because I know yeah. the vibe that I was putting out attracted people like Shelly and Brenda and, and Lisa. And, you know, it, it was, yeah, it's pretty cool. How about you, Shelly? Did you meet a lot of people on the other side of it? Oh, absolutely. And I, uh, I credit my, my doing what I did to uh, meeting Steve, mm. who I'm in a relationship with now, uh, who's Ooh. a total, totally different person than anyone I've ever met. Because before I went to Colorado, I attracted a tribe of whiners because that's what I was. Mm. <laughs> I was a whiner. And I, you know, I, I hung out with people who drink too much and all this stuff. And, and then when I came back, uh, yeah, I just had a different vibe, vibe about me. So yeah. I attracted people like you and uh, mm -hmm. to my favorite cow. <laughs> hey. <laughs> we love you, Shelly. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I think that's, that's important, too, to know that during that alone time, it's not going to last forever, and right. you'll probably want some of it to stay because it'll feel good. Well, and, and here's, here's another thing about this, too. So when, when I went through this and got my self-awareness and all that good stuff, is it also brought on a set of core values or what I call non-negotiables. I was able to say to myself and other people, oh, I'm sorry, that's a non-negotiable for me because mm -hmm. I'm truly self-aware. I truly know myself, but I truly deserve this. I'm truly worth this. And this is the path I'm going to stay on. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, you, sorry, but it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's just how it's going to be. And for you listeners, it is not selfish. It mm -hmm. is not selfish. To be able to create your own path, create your own self-awareness, move forward as you want to move. And people might fall off. And yes, it's sad. I have been there and done that. So I never, ever tell people that it's okay. But I just think, I just, I'm like an ex-smoker. You know what I'm saying? People mm. are still adamant about, about, about these kind of things. Because I can see on the other side just how much I truly love myself now. Mm. I truly and, love myself. I think that what that makes me think about is there's such a negative connotation to selfishness. Like we, we think about selfishness and we're like, oh my God, that person only cares about themselves. And again, in the book, I was like, um, for me, it's self full. Because when we think about pouring into other people and they say you have to be full to pour into other people, well, if you're full enough, then it'll, your, 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 your cup runs over. It runs over. You don't even have to, it's not effort to pour because whatever's running out of you will pour onto the people around you. So, I mean, it's being self-full. So that's what I always tell people when they're like, I'm just going to be selfish today. I'm like, no, you're just going to be self-full today. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and that's one of the things, that. that's one of the things we talk about um, in the, in the healthy boundaries is like there, there, there are some things that are selfish there that, that it's not saying that there's not, but the other, right. it's different than self-respect and self-care yeah. and all of that. So, right. yeah. Right. <clears throat> yeah. And I think you know that difference, don't you guys? When you get to the other side of all of this, I think you can feel the difference between selfish and self-full or self-respect or, I mean, I, I, I don't know. What do you guys think of that? That you feel the difference? Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're two totally different things. And, and I know that cognitively, but when you're either in a, uh, you know, in a situation like I was in this emotionally abusive relationship with a man who gaslighted me, everything I did was selfish, everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I totally get, there is a big difference. Being selfish would mean be, would be like me draining the banking cab and going buy clothes and not having an awareness of like, oh, I can't pay rent now. That's selfish. Right. But 
but going out and taking care of yourself, whether it's uh, mentally, physically, or emotionally, so that you can do the things that Brenda just talked about is not selfish. Self-respect is not selfish. That's what I think for me, my struggle is I I still have an internal struggle with it. Cognitively, I know when I'm being self-full or selfish, but that's that's still that old piece of me that's still inside is somebody who I care about. um, They used to be able to use selfishness as a manipulation tactic or like Mm -hmm. Shelly said, to gaslight me to go, you're just being selfish. There is a part of me that questions myself and I have to go back inside and go, okay. Am I being selfish? Am I so I, I do have to second think it. Um, usually mm-hmm. think it over a second time. Um, most of the time I'm like, no, I think I'm good with this. I feel like yeah. I'm being selfful because again, rewired, I don't believe that selfishness is in my nature. Like if I'm being selfish, I really want to dig in and figure out exactly what's happening with that, what's going on. Um, but in most time, it's by their perception that I'm being selfish because I'm not doing what it is that they want me to do. And it's like, mm-hmm. that's okay, that's your mm-hmm. thing. And again, it goes back to healthy boundaries. Right, right. But Ryan said, unapologetically me. I know that's right. That's so good. <clears throat> Lisa said, that's the best feeling ever to be able to say those words without hesitation. This is a non-negotiable for me. Mm-hmm. Yes, that is. Okay. And to mean it and to, let's see. <laughs> yeah. got time for that. <laughs> awesome. Well, do you guys have anything else to add? I don't know where we are on time. I, I can't see anything. I feel like I'm just like, oh, yeah. I have to Oh, we're at 40 minutes. Okay. So, yeah. (laughs) So, um, final thoughts? Jerry, Jerry. Oh, sorry. That's Jerry's That's final thought. Oh, he does? After every show. You can know that. Yeah. (laughs) Like, you don't have this whole, like, super ratchet show where people try to beat each other up and trying to kill each other. And at the end, it's like, Final thoughts. Be good to yourself so that you can be good to other people. <laughs> what are you doing? What just happened here? Um, missing out. No, I don't think I have any final thoughts. I'm super. I'm happy with this episode, and I'm glad we talked about it. Yeah, me too. How about you, Shelley? Absolutely, and I appreciate you uh, letting me on to to tell you what I think. Yeah. Well, thank you guys, and I think I I have final thoughts. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit more. No, I, no. I, think it's, I think it's just do the work. You know, this is not going to be easy, but it will be worth it. That's my final thoughts. Absolutely. I will give that an amen. All right. Yeah. All right. I'm going to give it two thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We're going to, we'll see you next we'll week. You next we don't week. know what we're talking about. I really want to recon- I want to think about this whole cliche thing. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you had an episode on cliches, by the way, didn't you? Like your top uh, 10 ones? Yeah, that... on my YouTube, it's uh, the top 10, uh, top 10, maybe it is top 10 cliche things I think, things I don't like. I don't remember how I afford it. I'm going to go find yeah. it. So we're going to go, we're going to do the, the total opposite and do cliches and what they mean and why we like them and maybe why, why we hate them. Ooh, I, I don't know. We won't look at yours though. I think it's a love <laughs> relationship, though. Yeah. Like, well, I think I think you'll do a good job because mine is basically about how people use them as an excuse to uh, just continue on their yeah. way, and that's why I applaud them. So yeah. All right, we'll take it all and up. I'm thinking, we're gonna work it out. <laughs> no, because, like, the, the, and, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I know. <laughs> all right well thank you guys um i don't know how to get out of here i remember doing this last week and i think you had to just close the meeting and last week yeah, just, you yeah. were like, I'm just gonna i just the closed meeting. the meeting that's it okay so when i end the meeting will i have to say goodbye to you guys too no we we're just gonna go away but we're probably gonna hop right back on zoom anyway so it's okay. <laughs> matter. Okay. We got work all right <laughs> all right we'll see you guys later See you later.